Um, our next speaker is Ari Khan, and he is devoted to the environment and green energy. And for the past two and a half years, Ari has held the position of electric vehicle policy analyst at Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability. In short, his job is to get New York City ready for electric vehicles and can speak to New York City readiness like no one else. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm not used to having an audience with so many car owners, so um, I think what I'll try to do is, um, during this presentation, um, try to make it clear on how you uh, might be able to charge in New York City. And it's uh, still a work in progress, but uh, you know, hopefully you guys will follow up afterwards and uh, ask me some questions about the garages in your neighborhood. Um, this presentation's in three parts. It talks about, uh, the first part talks about why electric cars in New York City. So, so John talked about that really broadly. I'll talk about it in the context of uh, the New York grid and also some New York air quality impacts. Um, second is, is um, talking about the electric vehicle initiatives we've done and, and why we've done them and how they'll hopefully help some of the car owners uh, in the room and also some of the non-car owners. And then finally, um, there was uh, sort of recent announcements about how uh, the city will has a goal of getting to 10,000 electric car ready parking spots by uh, 2020 and I'll, uh, I'll explain further that, that initiative. So first, this is actually from um, 2010. The numbers have gotten a little bit better since then, but you know, as John said, electric cars are as, as clean as your grid. Uh, in New York City, that means an electric car emits about 70% less CO2 than a conventional vehicle. Um, even compared to hybrids, you're looking at a 30 to 40% reduction in CO2. Um, there are also some other um, quality of life and air quality benefits as well. Um, quality of life is, is that they're pretty quiet and you know I think New York's loud enough already so uh, that would be an improvement. Second is, um, second is in terms of air quality, both um, particulate matter, nitrous oxide, and uh, benzene. So those are um, um, asthma inducing and carcinogens respectively. Um, electric vehicles, um, even accounting for the emissions from the power plant, emit far less of those, that pollution. And also, Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, so, uh, so just to give you an example, um, we, uh, Dwayne Reed electrified a quarter, about a quarter of its 60-vehicle uh, fleet, um, and in doing so, it took the pollution equivalent about, of about 1,000 cars off the road. Um, that's particularly great because they were replacing some um, old uh, diesel vehicles with, um, with these electric cars, but nevertheless, it, it shows a big, uh, big potential advantage for, for major air quality issues that affect the city. Um, so this just provides a bit of a timeline. So that explains so why uh, the city um, thinks electric cars are a good solution as part of a balanced transportation portfolio that includes um, biking. I think I've, I've told many of you already that, that I, I personally bike to work. Um, so, um, but, and also obviously public transportation, bus rapid transit, et cetera. Um, but in, uh, 20, in early 2010, um, the city did some research uh, and it showed that, um, that there were sort of two main barriers to adoption. One was education and awareness. 20% um, of people were more likely to buy an electric car once they learned more about them. Uh, and the other was um, access to charging. Um, so depending on which borough you're in, uh, between 40 and 80% of um, potential early adopters have um, permanent dedicated parking spots. So not, you know, they don't park on the curb and hunt for uh, available spaces. Um, so key is to um, be able to make it easy for those people to, um, to be able to access or install a charger. Um, one thing we did as well was look at um, where the potential markets for um, electric for electric vehicles are, um, and this is always a little bit um, hard to tell because I think, as John alluded to, um, the market for electric cars is new. So um, we did some initial analysis to see which markets, um, you know, which parts of the city are, are likely to have electric cars, and, and if, if they do have that charging infrastructure um, or ability to have that charging infrastructure that we saw. Um, one thing. One thing I also want to point out about charging infrastructure um, is that the, the city's done a few things to make it easier. So one is um, if you do have your own, um, you know, if you do park, um, have your own driveway or dedicated parking spot in an attached home, and there are many of those. We visited um, a gentleman in Staten Island who was uh, wanting to get an electric car and also had solar panels on his, on his roof. Um, 
we've done several things. One is the permitting process to put in a charger is, is very straightforward. Your electrician um, e-files for it, same as they would any other electrical appliance. They get that permit very quickly. Um, and actually, you're able to provisionally use it until somebody comes to inspect the charger. So um, it's a very straightforward process to install a charger in New York. Um, to make it easier to access off-peak um, prices, which help um, get you that that reduced uh, cost per mile that John alluded to. Um, we've made, we we um, basically created a waiver for a um, an old city rule that prohibited the installation of a second electricity meter um, um, at, in a single family home. Um, that's not the final solution, um, but it's a good intermediate solution. Um, to help address uh, education and awareness, we, um, in, uh, in the spring of um, 2012, it was, 2011 rather, um, we created an initial electric vehicle website. We used um, that data from the, from the consumer research study we did to help tell a story. So, tell stories. So, for example, if you have um, a car in a driveway, um, and uh, this is how you can use an electric vehicle. If you park in a parking lot, um, and you only have one car, um, this is how an electric vehicle could work for you. Um, so we hope that's successful. Um, finally, the city itself has gotten, a, gotten in, uh, again, three quarter, third quarter of 2011, 120 electric cars, which doesn't sound like an awful lot. I'm sorry, that was 170 then, 170 electric cars, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but um, makes us um, probably the second largest government fleet behind only the, the federal government. So, um, so that, that was a big step. Um, that guy does not look all that happy about the car. <laughs> but may, hopefully we'll change his mind. Um, we did some events, maybe you were at them, a film screening of uh, Revenge of the Electric Car in Central Park um, with about 500 folks. Um, and we also had cars, electric cars from the city, um, electric cars from the city and also from the private sector, um, just so people could look under the hood, see how they worked, ask drivers from the city, because we are kind of on the vanguard, um, you know, what their experiences were. And, um, you know, the, the New York Times actually um, uh, had an article about that, featured um, an Iraq vet, which, you know, was very powerful. You know, he, um, you know, he really, he liked that, um, you know, that the, the car didn't run on oil. Um, we're also doing some um, taxi pilots. Um, so uh, we're, we'll be introducing six, um, six Nissan Leafs as taxis this spring um, to see how they operate. Uh, and we've also got a, uh, the mayor announced a goal to get to 30% taxi electrification. Um, taxis are, are kind of complicated um, because of some federal lawsuits that have prohibited the city from um, getting the types of vehicles it necessarily wants. Um, so one thing we're doing is to try to make sure that electric cars are an economic choice for drivers um, so that, that uh, it'll be market driven. Um, where um, that map on the left shows where um, charging is, now it's expanded a little bit, but what you see here is that um, if you live in Manhattan, um, odds are there is a garage near you, there are about 120 public charging spots in the city. So there, you know, if you are in Manhattan, there's probably a garage near you that is offering um, a charger. So, um, so hopefully that is a solution for some of you. Um, this map, um, shows, uh, shows garages in the outer boroughs that the city is going to be in um, garages available to the public that are owned by the city. That's sort of um, a little bit vestigial from the Robert Moses era, um, but we nevertheless have those garages. So we are installing chargers in them because that coincides with the map I showed earlier where there was um, potential for electric vehicle adoption. But unfortunately, as the map on the left shows, not enough chargers. Um, we did a, a social engagement project over the last year. We partnered with um, a local nonprofit called uh, Empire Clean Cities that, that I thought was exciting because it gave people who don't even have an, who um, don't own a vehicle a chance um, to participate in, uh, in electric cars in the city. And, and what it did was it allowed you to vote on where you wanted electric cars or electric uh, vehicle infrastructure. Um, so this contest was to vote for an electric car share in your neighborhood. Um, we partnered with uh, Hertz, and which uh, has a, um, a car share program that's much like Zipcar, um, and they presented several, um, and they gave everybody choices. And uh, the garages that got the most votes um, above a certain threshold uh, would have gotten an electric car. Unfortunately, none of the, none of the uh, spots crossed that threshold. So. I'm not sure if that's a lesson. Um, but another, uh, another uh, project uh, with Mission Electric voting was, was quite successful, was with Dwayne Reed, and you got to vote on which store, um, which store uh, would be served by electric trucks. So you got to vote to make your neighborhood be served by trucks that were um, cleaner and greener. It wasn't all of their trucks, they were assigning some 
um, some already, but it was a subset of those, uh, those new 12 electric trunks. 14, sorry. Um, so finally, um, garages, are gonna, garages and parking lots are a place where people are going to be able to charge, um, or most easily be able to charge in New York. So John mentioned um, types of charging. Uh, he mentioned level two, which requires uh, the installation of a dedicated charger that is approximately $1,500, although um, you know, prices are dropping, um, and, and the installation of an electrician. We thought as an initial first step, we reached out to garages um, all over the city, particularly outside of Manhattan, and asked if they would um, offer level Level one charging. And what that means is if you have a plug-in Prius, if you have a Chevrolet Volt, um, cars that have, have slightly smaller batteries than a Tesla um, or a Nissan Leaf, um, you can plug into a normal wall outlet and get a full charge overnight. So many of those, um, so if you notice those maps are different, um, this map has many more pins in it than the one I showed previously. Um, about 30 garages uh, outside of Manhattan um, have offered level one charging. Um, one thing we're going to try to do to publicize that is, um, is these signs um, that they can put outside of their garages. Because I think that, how many of you knew that there were charging stations in your neighborhood? Okay, so far, far less. I mean, I don't think most New Yorkers realize there are 120 um, charge spots in the city and, and growing. So, um, you know, this is obviously a very simple thing, but your tax dollars at work. Um, um, having the sign out front will show that garages do have charging and will raise awareness about electric vehicles. Um, I think that I've already uh, promised, uh, Tom, if you want, you can have that bumper sticker for your car. I know it's a lease, so you might have to return it, but, um, but they're coming at you. Um, these are just some outreach events we've done to try to bring the cars to the people. Um, and then most recently, um, this all sort of has culminated in three initiatives um, that were mentioned recently in the state of the city. So one was creating 10,000 um, electric car ready parking spots. Um, the other was piloting quick charging. Um, I think John, John, I don't think you mentioned that as part of the TEPCO study, but that, that's the kind of charging that um, gives you 80% uh, in 30 minutes or less. Um, so we're piloting um, three quick chargers in the city. They're the first. They're part of this taxi pilot. Two are going to be curbside, and one's available to the public. Um, and then finally, you know, as I mentioned, many, many New Yorkers don't drive, um, uh, don't have their own dedicated car, but there are 15,000 taxis on the road. So we, are, um, so we, are, we have uh, set a goal of 33% taxi electrification, um, and I had a meeting this morning um, with... Um, with uh, taxi drivers, um, real estate industry, Con Edison, on how we can get there. Um, I don't know if I should, uh, questions from the audience. I will, but, but that's a good question. Thank you for, for pointing out that I didn't answer. Let me get to that next, actually, it's coming up. Um, this is just an example of what that quick charger looks like. It's much, much bigger than um, a regular car, I mean, than a regular level two charger but um, it does allow you to fully charge a battery 80% in 30 minutes. And this is the one that's in um, Seward Park on the Lower East Side. Seward Park deserves a tremendous amount of credit. They are, um, they are outgreening my co-op in every possible way. Um, I won't tell you where my co-op is. Um, but, um, so, and this is just one of several initiatives they partnered with the city and Nissan um, to install this quick charger, which will help support that taxi pilot. And it's, and it's open to the public as well, so you'll be able to use it. Um, you asked what um, electric car ready parking is. What that means is um, when a new parking facility is built in New York City, if, if, um, if we are successful in passing um, this new green code, um, when new parking is created in the city, 20% um, of it will have to be electric car ready. And what that means is that there's enough panel capacity, so enough electricity to support a charger and also conduit, um, basically um, what you would put the wire in to get the charger there. And what that does is it makes it much, much easier for a garage owner who doesn't necessarily own the property um, to, to make the upgrades to install the charger. All they need to do then is install um, that you know, $1,500 soon to be, actually it's a little more with the commercials, but um, you know, um, um, reasonably priced um, charger um, in order to serve an electric car. Um, so that's, that's the gist of the code. Uh, and we think that that's a good, uh, and, and it's, it's following the footsteps 
of uh, cities like London and Vancouver that have installed, that have had those uh, codes on the books for over three years. We think it makes particular sense in New York because of the way parking works. Um, not only is it going to, to um, help when we do have 20% of cars in the city be electric, but it helps now um, because because parking in New York is often available to the public in a new uh, building. So if a, if a new building with parking goes up in your neighborhood, it will be easier for you to, inst to buy an electric car because you'll be able to use that garage. It's a little surprising to New Yorkers that, um, there's, that um, there's so much parking being created, but in fact, there are about 10,000 new parking spots built every year. Um, and again, that's usually in new buildings. Um, this shows from 2009 to 2012. Um, if you notice, they're sort of in every borough, and that 2012 number actually understates things because we pulled that before the end of the year. Uh, this also, again, shows that that parking is, um, you know, you know, is in Manhattan, uh, you know, the, the plurality of it is Manhattan, but um, it's still, it's otherwise fairly evenly distributed. Um, so, actually, that's, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, oh, um, and uh, I'm happy to answer questions.